Hey, what's up, Musers? This is John at Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in an attempt to to make working with breakpoints easier for you, um, I've decided to talk about the Google Resizer for Quick Tip Number Four. Um, so the Google Resizer um, has a few breakpoints that I think are a great reference to use when adding breakpoints to your own website. And as an example, I'll go to the website. Um, and this is a great website to add to your web design toolbox. So to access the site, you go to design.google.com slash resizer. Okay, and the first thing we see here is the Google design, uh, the design.google.com website on three different devices, on desktop, tablet, and mobile. And right up here, we have the laptop icon, which is laptop and desktop. And here we have seven different breakpoints. We have 480, 600, 840, 960, 1280, 1440, and 1600. Now these are the breakpoints that Google uses for their material design interface. Um, and it is a, an interface that they're using for you know all their apps, their web apps and their mobile apps. Um, if you use Gmail, you'll see the, the material design in Gmail. Uh, so because Google services millions of people, um, I'd say it, it's pretty safe to, to use these breakpoints because um, th these are the breakpoints that they use for their own design. Um, so we have seven different breakpoints here for desktop and laptop. And then for tablet and mobile, we have four different breakpoints. So we have 360, 600, 720, and 1024. So you can see how the website will look on those devices. Uh, so in total, there's about 10 breakpoints, but uh, having this reference is really great. If you really wanted high breakpoints, you could use 1600 and 1440, but it is a great reference if you were wondering how many breakpoints to add or where to add breakpoints. So here are the breakpoints, and uh, it's a little bit different than Safari's, uh, Safari's responsive design. Um, this is another uh, great tool to add to your web design toolbox. Um, if I go to develop, enter responsive design, uh, here we're using mostly Apple devices, and we have 800 by 600, 768 by 1366, and 1920 by 1080. But what's great about Safari's responsive design is that you can test on different uh, web browsers. So we have Internet Explorer, Google Chrome, Firefox, and Safari on iPhone, on iPad. We even have Microsoft Edge here as well, and earlier versions of Safari. Um, so you can test on different web browsers. Um, I'd recommend using the Google Resizer for uh, the breakpoints. And then to test on different web browsers, you could use Safari and also see how the website looks on a few different Apple devices and on a few larger breakpoints. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. I just wanted to go over the Google Resizer. So it's design.google.com slash resizer and you can add the different breakpoints here. So it is quite a few breakpoints, but if you have a really nice design, um, it'll work really well with the breakpoints. Uh, if you're using a lot of third-party widgets uh, among breakpoints, maybe adaptive design could work a little better. Uh, but if you have a really nice design and you just want to kind of you know, make sure that your website works on all breakpoints, you could add all of these breakpoints here for the desktop and, ta uh, desktop and uh, laptop. And then here on phone, there's a few other breakpoints as well. Um, so yeah, I'd, I'd just say, you know, keep it simple on mobile and um, on desktop, you can definitely, you know, add a lot of cool third party widgets, um, but tablet and mobile tablet, you could get away with a few uh, third party widgets, but I really would recommend keeping it simple on mobile. And if you are struggling a little bit with breakpoints and, you know, the web design, uh, you could try adaptive design. And I went over that in quick tip number two, uh, simplifying with adaptive design. But breakpoints are great. You know, if you have a really good design, they can work really well for your website. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. Uh, if you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you.